You can get 24 gigabytes of VRAM on eBay for $100, but does it work? Is it worth it? This is the NVIDIA Tesla K80 dual GPU with 12 gigabytes of VRAM per GPU. The TLDR is, this card is a beast, but don't waste your time or money. Before we get into the weeds, there are some big hurdles to jump. Let's go over the problems you'll need to solve before this GPU can solve your problem. These obstacles are installation of mounting hardware, power, cooling, a second GPU for your display, GPU drivers, and stability. After you've overcome all these obstacles, then we can see if the GPU is compatible with DaVinci Resolve and what everyone wants to know, how well it performs. Let's get homeschooled. Mm, that sounded better in my head. The mounting hardware on a K80 is made for rack mounted servers. You'll need a long skinny screwdriver to remove this hardware. The screwdriver size is Phillips 2. The K80 will then have nothing to secure it, so I used cardboard. <clears throat> this isn't suggested because this card gets extremely hot and I was very concerned about the cardboard catching fire. If you don't support this GPU, it will likely bend your PCIe slot. So I laid my PC on its side to reduce the strain on the PCIe slot. Get creative with how you mount it. Just remember, use non-flammable materials because of the heat. The heat is because of the amount of power this card draws. The K80s take a 8-pin CPU power cable. The reason for this is because at full load, these two GPUs will draw far more power than a single 8-pin PCIe cable can deliver. The 8-pin PCIe connector can fit and your computer will boot, but if you put a full load on it, it's likely to crash due to unstable power delivery. The power rating on these GPUs is 300 watts. And they mean 300 watts because this card sucks around 130 watts per GPU at 100% load and produces a ton of heat. I hope you have an overkill power supply unit. I have an 850 watt PSU and I was fine, but I only have an NVIDIA GTX 960 and an Intel 9700K, so I'm not drawing much power anyways. If you have a high-end CPU or GPU, you will need a big PSU. And then there's cooling both GPUs. Get creative with it. <laughs> it needs far more cooling than anything else in the system. This card is designed to throttle at 80 degrees and shut down at 95 degrees. <laughs> the easiest way to cool this is getting a dual water block off Alibaba. The GPU towards the front of the card stays decently cool with a 120 millimeter fan and this cardboard funnel I made, but the GPU in the rear of the card gets warmed by the air that was heated when it passed over the GPU in the front of the card. Even without putting a load on the rear GPU, I was seeing temperatures of 95 degrees after about 30 minutes of idling. You might be able to solve this with a blowy Matron and a 3D printed funnel off eBay for 30 bucks, but I'm gonna recommend water cooling. For now, I removed the plastic cover by unscrewing the eight bolts around the sides of the heat sink. The driver bit size is a hex 1.5 millimeter. And then I taped two 120 millimeter fans to the heat sink. This improved temps to 86 degrees at full load on the rear GPU and 78 degrees on the front GPU. The difference in temperature between the two GPUs, I believe is due to airflow. The back of the card is being blocked by the case. Thankfully, I wasn't hitting 95 degrees anymore and I stopped experiencing crashes. Okay, now that you've got your K80 installed, let's plug in your display. Oh wait, there's no display ports on this card. <laughs> Another obstacle to overcome. Depending on your preference, you can use the integrated GPU that's on your CPU for single display setups and you don't care about 480p resolution or if you like to edit on multiple displays that are high definition, like myself, you'll need a discrete GPU. I would suggest getting an NVIDIA GPU because of display drivers fighting each other. 
I struggled with this so much. I would suggest just popping the card in, booting, and seeing if the latest drivers for your other GPU pick up the K80. I had the best luck with the game drivers. Go figure. The Tesla drivers sucked. They only allowed for 480p on one screen. And that is what we call spreading misinformation. Good job, Will. I just got a comment from Shaka. I think you must have the NVIDIA Quadro to pair with those Teslas. Tesla and Quadros use NVIDIA drivers. GTX and in Tesla's cards don't use the same drivers. Quadro Tesla drivers with a GTX card won't probably be very effective. BIOS type is quite different in consumer cards versus business cards. So what this means is that if I used a Quadro card to push my displays, then I could get more efficiency out of the Tesla card doing the heavy lifting in DaVinci Resolve because I would be using the Tesla drivers that work with the Quadro card and theoretically I could get three HD displays out of the Quadro card and not have drivers butting heads. He went on to say if I had to guess any Quadro using one of these chips listed below would use the same drivers as a K80. Quadro K600 and K620 cards won't cost more than $15 to try. Thank you, Sheka. I appreciate you. Also, you will encounter system interruptions sucking 15 to 35% of your CPU after you boot the computer into Windows 10. Using the Tesla driver didn't fix this. Nothing I did fix this. The only thing you can do is Boot the computer, open Task Manager, see that two of your cores are at 100% load due to system interruptions, then restart your Windows 10, not shut down and boot the computer. This will not get rid of the system interruptions. You must restart Windows 10. After that, you're sailing. I haven't had any stability problems since the I got the cooling under control. Stability was a nightmare. These findings are my anecdotal notes on my experience. In Windows 10, I experienced a ton of crashes before I cooled the card. Program crashes and OS crashes. So I tried Linux Pop OS, and honestly, it seems fine. But then again, I've spent more time in Windows than I have in Pop OS. You should note that the NVIDIA Tesla K80 was designed to run in Linux, and so was DaVinci Resolve. And then of course there's Mac OS. It's not compatible with an NVIDIA GPU, sorry. And here's the real kicker. Is DaVinci Resolve compatible with the Tesla K80? Yes! DaVinci Resolve 16 is compatible. However, DaVinci Resolve 17 beta is not compatible. Will Blackmagic add compatibility? Who knows? This is a half decade old card. It's not likely a priority for them. As far as settings in DaVinci Resolve 16, I selected CUDA and then both the K80 GPUs. I deselected the GTX 960, more on why in a minute. Restart DaVinci Resolve 16 Studio. Oh, also, if you're going to use both the K80s in DaVinci Resolve, you need to purchase DaVinci Resolve Studio for $300. And then you can use more than one GPU in your system, which should give you great performance, right? <sighs> Remember, at the beginning of this journey, we wanted to get rid of the GPU memory full error that kept popping up. Well, if you use your display GPU alongside the Tesla and your display GPU is four gigabytes of VRAM, like my GTX 960, you will still get this error every few seconds. There might be ways around this that I'm not aware of, especially in Linux. So fill up the comments with helpful suggestions for other people who might be interested in trying this. So I had to select only the K80. This is an amazing card. It's designed for computation, with no acceleration for decoding or encoding footage, but it has a ton of horsepower. And I didn't get this card because my 960 couldn't handle decoding 1080p H.264. The 960 soared through that footage. I got this card because of my raw time lapses in 6K. 
So that shouldn't need decoding, right? And man, playback was a little choppy at 18 FPS, but that was due to my NVMe drive being maxed out at 2.2 gigabytes per second. Ah, yeah, hot, very hot. I'm gonna need a PCIe Gen 4 SSD if I'm going to keep working with TIFF files. I was able to add color correction, blur effects, layers of color grading. This card soars through it all. Once you get a complicated set of effects in 6K, both K80s will hit 100% load, which is understandable. For my use case, I was able to put more effects on the clips than I would ever need for my simple videos. Let me know if you want me to try an effect that you use. Could this be improved if I could use both GPUs? Yes, probably. If I pair this K80 with a card that has eight gigabytes of VRAM, I imagine that this setup would dominate 6K and possibly 8K footage. Typically with two GPUs, you will experience about 60 to 80% more performance than one GPU, but the K80 already has two GPUs, but it doesn't have decoding or encoding acceleration, so we may need to revisit this when I have more money. <laughs> Speaking of money, let's talk about how much it's going to cost to get this GPU running tip top. The K80 goes for $100 on eBay. You will need a second NVIDIA GPU for displays, $100 on eBay. You will need an overkill PSU if you don't already have one, so $200. You will need DaVinci Resolve Studio for $300. If you are going to use both GPUs, you could buy the K40, which is the same card with one GPU on it, but those go for $100 on eBay as well. So you will need a dual GPU water block for about $200, a radiator for $100, fittings and tubings for $100, pump and reservoir for $100, which gives you a grand total of $12 hundred dollars. What could you purchase with twelve hundred dollars? An RTX 3080, a 3080 Ti, Radeon 6900, heck a Radeon 6700 has 16 gigabytes of VRAM for five hundred and seventy nine dollars. You could buy two of those and have 32 gigabytes of VRAM. And Nvidia just announced that they have a three hundred and fifty dollar 3060 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and 50% more performance than the K80. Now, you could use two of those and have 24 gigabytes of VRAM and have 300 times the performance. Also, it has decoding and encoding acceleration as well as ray tracing acceleration. If that is something that's in your workflow, I personally could really use RTX Voice. So, yeah. Look at this list of items you need to support this GPU, then subtract all the items you have already. Then look at your personal total and ask yourself, is this worth that amount of money? Or a better question, could I purchase a more modern GPU with that amount of money? The 1080 Ti with 11 gigabytes of VRAM goes for 400 bucks on eBay right now. And we already know the $1,500 RTX 3090 can handle 8K footage, no problem. I didn't write a conclusion for this script because you really need to make a decision for yourself. Is 6K raw editing worth $100? Also, I don't know everything about this GPU. If you know something about this card that can make it perform better, leave it in the comments and I'll try it. And if it works, I'll make a video about it. I'm not done testing this thing. I want to try Linux more. However, I don't think that it has a future in DaVinci Resolve 17. This GPU is more of a band-aid in my system until I can get my hands on the RTX 3090. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you. And I want to thank all of you that commented on the live stream I did talking about this K80. You all helped me get this K80 up and working properly. Especially Paul, Robin, and Joel, you guys helped me iron out all the bugs as well as provided a way for Windows 10 to read the K80's temperature to then be able to control the fan speed. This community you guys are building is really chill, and I'm glad we got to work on this project together. 
and then I taped two 120 milli and then I taped two 100 milli 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 milli